How's it going? Welcome back to Dylan Pickup's blog. Today we are going to start a series of videos talking about probably the most important modification you can do to your guitar and that is a proper setup. If the guitar is more easily playable, if it stays in tune better, if it intonates properly, if it's easier to play just to fret the notes, uh, you're going to find that your tone's going to be better, it's going to be easier to get the sounds that you want out of the guitar, and I believe that even a very inexpensive guitar can be set up properly and a big improvement in how you play and how you sound can be based on just a good setup. Um, and anybody can set up a guitar. Anybody can set up a guitar properly and I think it's something that people should not be afraid of. People are afraid to mess with stuff because they think they're gonna mess it up, they're not gonna be able to bring it back, but you know, it, it's, it's all pretty simple and it's something that we can, we can all learn to do. So today, in our first video in this series, we're gonna talk about setting our neck relief because that is probably the thing that makes the most impact on how the guitar plays, how easy it is to play, and also uh, it's probably the first thing to do in the setup so that we can base all of our other measurements, intonation, bridge height, saddle height, all that stuff, nut height even, on all of that bef after we've set our neck relief. The other reason why neck relief is probably the most important thing to do first is because, and this is something to think about, it's the only thing in a guitar that moves without you moving it. So a guy will get up in the morning uh, or he will pull his guitar out of storage and he will go to play it and it, the action will be high. And the very first thing he does is goes down here and he messes with his saddle height because the action is too high. Or he'll mess with the two pivots on his tremolo because the action is too high. The only thing that moved when you were not there is the relief in the neck because the organic material in the wood obviously moves and different kinds of wood move differently. So start there. Don't ever move anything else in the guitar except for tuning it, putting strings on it and tuning it before you check your neck relief. That is probably the biggest thing because you base all your other me measurements off of that. So how does neck relief work? We have a neck here to an electric guitar. There is a threaded rod that goes through the middle of it. It is fixed on one end. There is a nut on the other end where we can put a hex wrench. As we tighten that, so righty tighty lefty loosey, as we tighten that, the center of the neck it actually puts tension on that neck and it bows the neck up this way. As we loosen it, it will actually lower that, it will, it will take the arch out of that neck, flatten it out, and start to go the other way. Depending on the type of truss rod you have, in all of our builds we use dual action truss rods. Single action truss rod means that as it comes back to neutral and it loosens, the actual the nut can actually come off. A double action truss rod will make it to where you can actually go the other way with it. So when you tighten it, the center rises up, and when you loosen it, the center falls and starts to bend the other way because with no tension on the truss rod, remember that we're talking about two forces that are interacting with each other. The tension of the strings is pulling the neck this way. The truss rod is in there to counteract that action by keeping it straight. As we loosen that truss rod then basically the the neck will start to pull up because the strings are pulling against it. It's fixed though so when like I said when we tighten it what's happening is it's actually bending it up in the middle. It's actually bending it up in the middle. So what do we want to do? How do we want to do this? Well, there are a couple of different measurements that we need to take. The way we do that, um, actually, I'm going to show you. 
Okay, so when we have our guitar here, nut is down here. Obviously, the the end of the truss rod is 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 right here. This cover will come off, and there will be an Allen key in there. The proper way to do this is basically put a capo on the first fret. You can just hold it and eyeball it, but until you get a feel for it, it's easier to do to to put a capo on it. I like to put the capo actually right on top of the first fret for this measurement or just behind it like that. Now there's a few different schools of thought on this and it has a lot to do with how uh, the guitar is constructed. Some people say put your finger all the way on the last fret. Some people say put your finger where the neck meets the body somewhere around the 14th or 15th fret. The point here is, and it depends basically on how your guitar is built. I think on this guitar and it also depends on how much of the neck you use when you play it. Personally, I like to use the whole neck because if there's a bad fret up here higher or something, it helps you to find it. So what I like to do is put my thumb at this last neck, this last fret back here, and then I check somewhere around the 7th to 9th fret area, and I tap on the string. The way to do it officially is with a feeler gauge. But if you don't have a feeler gauge, you can use a business card. And you like to set it at about 10 thousandths or so, somewhere between the 5th and the 7th fret. This guitar uh, is a hair higher than that on purpose, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Something you should know though, you notice that I've got this sitting in a neck cradle and it's laying on the desk. Don't ever check your neck relief with the guitar in this position because this is pushing up on the neck. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, you could actually, believe it or not, it'll move enough. We're only talking about a couple of thousandths of an inch making a difference here. So when you do it, honestly, I just put it in my lap like I'm normally playing it. Make sure that the guitar is in playing position like this, or you can stand it up on its end pin also. But the bottom line is you don't want the weight of the neck or you don't want the force of a neck cradle to be working against the measurement that you're trying to make. So typically I like to do this in, net, in playing position. So even now, let me just check this real quick. This reads a little bit less than when I put it right here. It's actually, the action is higher when I put it right here. So that just shows you the point I was trying to make is that the force of the neck cradle can mess with your measurement. What influences how you set this? All right, to understand how you set your action, uh, a lot of people say that 10 thousandths of an inch is for most medium middle of the road players is is right. This number though is kind of a variable depending on a few things. What are they? One is how hard you play because remember the whole point of us doing this is because the string moves in an elliptical fashion. So if we were to have a 100% flat neck and our peg heads down here, okay, then you would have fret buzz. The, net, the string would be hitting the neck because it's moving in an elliptical fashion. And it's actually moving in splits of that, believe it or not. We'll get into that in another video, but that's why it doesn't buzz everywhere. It buzzes in a couple of places. But the bottom line is the thing moves in an elliptical fashion. It does not move straight up and down, so that is why you really should have a little bit of that in your neck. Now obviously that is a, an exaggeration in a drawing, but if this distance right here is about 10 thousandths, it's usually right about on. If you play really hard uh, or 
yeah, if you play if you play really hard, then those strings are going to be going up and down in that elliptical fashion a lot more. You might need a little bit more. So, set it to a middle of the road setting. Uh, Ten thousands is good on most necks. And if you find that there's a little bit of fret buzz, play it for a couple of days like that. If you've made a lot of adjustment and you've had to make, you know, like three or four little cranks with your Allen key, and let that thing sit around for a day, or if it's something that you just pulled out of storage, let it sit around for a day, first of all, before you even adjust any of this. See how it settles with the, with the new weather, with the new season. Make a little bit of adjustment, play it for a few days, and say, you know what? Man, it's still, it's rattling a little bit because I'm playing a little harder. Uh, then maybe you go back there and you put a little bit more of that arch in it. And maybe you bring this up to 12 thousandths. And then that string buzz goes away. It's still frettable enough for you. You can press on the, the frets, uh, the strings, and, and fret the notes. Um, and it, and it works just fine for you. Maybe you play it and you say, wow, this is, this is good, but I wonder if I can get it a little bit lower. And you bring this down to maybe eight thousandths, or if your fret job is really good, five thousandths. Man, if you get down that low, um, depending on your setup, then you got a guitar that plays real nice and fast. So, the things that affect it. Weather, humidity, that sort of stuff, depending on the wood, depending on the age of the guitar, depending on the stability of the neck, depending on a few things like that. And the other thing too is remember that this truss rod is acting in opposition to your string tension. So if you change string uh, springs in your tremolo, if you change string weights, go from a 10 to a 12, light top, heavy bottoms, if you do any of that kind of stuff, you're going to probably mess with your action a little bit. Again, give it some time. You know, make an adjustment. Go back an hour later and see how it feels. Because that, that wood's going to move. You know, depending on how dry it is, depending on how humid the air is, it's going to move around a little bit. So, that's probably the first baseline measurement to make uh, and adjustment to make to your guitar. We will probably come back to this a little bit when we talk about the height of our nut. We talk about intonation, we're going to talk about bridge, uh, saddle height adjustment, all those things. But start there and see how your guitar feels. I bet it'll feel better. And tomorrow we will discuss nut height and uh, how that affects the playability. It can actually affect your intonation if it's really high and the reasons why you would set that at different heights. So stay tuned and we will talk to you tomorrow.